Now, there's a reason I didn't mention TensorFlow specifically in the previous lecture, which is because that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture. So this lecture is going to be about how to use TensorFlow 2.0 in Colab. You'll notice that if you import TensorFlow in Colab and you check the version, it'll say 1.14. So let's do that. Now, obviously, this depends on when you try to do this. Currently, at the time I am making this course, TensorFlow 2.0 is still in beta, which means it hasn't officially been released yet. So if you try to use the usual command pip install TensorFlow, you will not get TensorFlow 2.0. Of course, this will change in the future when TensorFlow 2.0 is officially released, at which point the usual command pip install TensorFlow will actually give you TensorFlow 2.0. And of course, as subsequent versions are released, that will change to 2.1, 2.2, and so forth, or whatever version numbers they end up using. Luckily, you can install other libraries in a Colab notebook, which did not come with the notebook. So for example, if Colab didn't come with scikit-learn installed, then you would just run the command bang pip install scikit-learn inside a code cell within the Colab notebook. In other words, in order to install libraries, it's as simple as running the usual pip commands. You just have to put the bang symbol first. More on that later. For now, we are interested in TensorFlow 2.0. At the time I made this video, the current version of TensorFlow 2.0 is beta 1. So the current command would be bang pip install minus q TensorFlow equals equals 2.0.0 dash beta 1. Note that the minus Q option here means quiet, which just means print out less stuff. It doesn't actually modify the functionality of the command. Importantly, here you have to keep in mind one of my famous rules, learn the principles, not the syntax. This is very important here. Why do I say this? Well, inevitably, some lost soul will end up saying, why should I use this command when TensorFlow beta 3 is out? Doesn't this mean that the lecture is out of date? Shouldn't you update this lecture? And remember the rule, learn the principles, not the syntax. Of course, today, the latest version is beta 1. Tomorrow, that might be beta 2 or beta 3 or beta 500. Who knows? The principle is to look at TensorFlow's website to check what the current command is. That's the principle. Don't try to memorize the install command verbatim, which would be very silly. Okay, so be smart, don't be silly, learn the principles, and don't memorize the syntax. Also, note that you can install the GPU version of TensorFlow, which is, as usual, pip install tensorflow-gpu. Interestingly, on Colab, I found that using the GPU is not that much faster than using the CPU, so for most small problems, it shouldn't matter that much what you use. For TPUs, we'll be discussing how that works later in the course. So let's run this. So after installing TensorFlow 2.0, you can check the version again. So just print out tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore, and you should see 2.0.0 or something similar. So let's run this. And so now there is one caveat to this, which is that I found that this sometimes doesn't work. So even after installing TensorFlow 2.0, I print out the version and it still says 1.14. It seems that the problem is if you import TensorFlow and then try to change the version, it won't work. So if you accidentally do this and you actually want TensorFlow 2.0, then what you want to do is First, make sure you are not trying to import TensorFlow before installing TensorFlow. So let's comment this out. And then let's go to the runtime menu and select restart runtime. So yes, so we're no longer running this. We're just going to run this. And now we're going to run this. And it works. So now we have 2.0.0, beta 1. 
Now, in general, I find that this is a bit wonky. So if I run this notebook and then I try to change the TensorFlow version later, so say I try to switch from CPU to GPU or the reverse, things tend to get a little weird. So what I like to do is have everything set from the beginning, know what you want to use, and then run it like that from the start. And don't try to change things in between because sometimes the thing you were using before is sort of like sticky. So even if you try to change it, it won't actually change. Now, there is another important caveat to this, which is that if you recall, previously I said if you leave your notebook idle for too long, it'll disconnect. If this happens, unfortunately, your TensorFlow version will revert back to the default, and you'll need to install TensorFlow 2.0 again. Now, personally, I don't mind running all the cells each time, since if I really wanted to run everything in one go, I would just run it locally. But if, for some reason, you would like to have TensorFlow 2.0 Beta 1 permanently installed in your Colab, you could try the solution provided in this link I've attached. Again, that's up to you, but personally, I didn't have a reason to do it myself. So you'll recall that we discussed this bank command, which by the way, also exists in regular Jupyter Notebook. So far, you know that it can be used to run pip install commands. But in general, you can treat this like a directive that tells the notebook that you want to run this command like you would in the terminal. For example, if I want to list all the files in the current directory, I could use the command bang ls. So let's try that. Interestingly, you'll see that there's this folder that appears called sample data. So we can call bang ls sample data. So here you can see we have the famous MNIST dataset, the California housing dataset, and some random JSON file. We may or may not use these, but these are good if you want to just run some simple tests, like say, try a simple image classifier on MNIST. In any case, there you have it. That's how you use TensorFlow 2.0 in Colab in the case that it's not yet been officially released.